Oh, yeah! Here it comes. A fitting start for this trip. Oh. A couple of years ago, Aaron and I finished our most brutal trip together. We were wading through the ice, creek whacking, like it was just an awful, brutal trip, terrible weather. Ended with us getting drenched here on this lake and it was a very memorable trip, but we didn't really get to enjoy a lot of it. So I'm here retracing the end of it, starting from the opposite direction, not doing the entire loop, but just enough to enjoy this end, which we thought was gorgeous, but we had to rush through. We were just spent, we were done, we were out of time. Hopefully this time I can enjoy it. Might as well get some use out of these beaver chewed birches. A muddy spot there. On to the second portage. Nice clear one. This lake here is a stunner. Big part of the reason why I came back here. didn't take long. I know there are Lakers in here. Erin got her first and second lake trout ever here. And I think there could be brookies as well, but unconfirmed. This one doesn't really feel like a brookie, so. I'm gonna say lake trout. Staying down pretty well. Oh, well, decent size, decent. Come here. There we go. Oh, I love barbless hooks. You see that just pop out? His hands good and wet. Protect the fish. Okay. You're going home, buddy. Just a second, please. Pretty good start. Not bad at all. Sorry. On the Berkeley Flicker Minnow Deep. It's got a good sized lip on it, so it dies down a bit. Sweet. What are you? What are you? Hook popped out, but he landed in the net. Oh, a tiny little laker. It's one of the smallest lake trout I've ever caught. I was just <laughs> trying to avoid a snag there. I saw a log that I was going over and I didn't want to snag on it, so I just ripped my lure home. Oh man, look at that little laker. Tiny. Thanks, buddy. I would like to keep one to eat, but uh, not yet. Yeah, I was just ripping my lure home to try and avoid the snag, and I guess he was enticed by it. Fish seem pretty turned on. This, this is a good start. Not that kind of turned on. That'd be a creep. This is unbelievable. I can't make progress because the trout keep biting. I'm okay with that. Got a tailwind too. Life's good. Another laker. Just gonna let him pop off here. I've seen one laker. I've seen two lakers. This guy just gets to, to go. Less time they're out of the water, the better, if you're releasing. Wow! This lake is incredible. It's so nice to be able to enjoy it this time. And I could stop here and camp where Aaron and I camped, have a lovely time, fish for lake trout. It's right across for some, some cliffs, so it's really a nice sight. Or I could carry on and do some grueling bush wax, probably, into some small lakes that I suspect could have brookies. The, the choice should be easy, but I, I pretty much know I'm gonna go exploring those bush whack lakes. There's an amazing campsite here on a point. Of course, light. And uh, it's ruined. What do you make of this? Full-on 
tempo tent shelter. Dilapidated porta potty. Lovely. Just charming. There's nothing I can really do or say about it. But uh, curious, what are your thoughts? Would you pay your tax dollars to have better enforcement on something like this? I wish that we had conservation officers galore. Just cracking down on stuff like this. It's firewood though. Stuff like that is why I go bushwhacking into these little lakes that just no one goes to because they're pristine. This is an incredible spot with a really gross, gross blemish. Back to the good stuff. This lake is just otherwise incredible. And if you can make it out, there's a little rock, exposed rock there. That is where we camped last year. The air and ice data is right across from the lake for me now. If I go down to the other end of the lake, I'm pretty much committed to that for the rest of the day. I'll be windbound there. This wind is picking up and it's getting stronger and stronger as I get down the lake and there's more fetch. We gotta at least see if there's a way into these next lakes. Seconds later, fish on. Another laker. this lake on the way back and if the trails don't work out to these next lakes then I might be back here later tonight when the wind dies down so I'll be back starting to scout from here and I'm just gonna walk I'm not clearing anything yet it would just be madness before scouting it's about three quarters of a kilometer or, I don't know half a mile so first time this is just a feasibility study Whoa. and we'll see if this is if there's any hope of this if I'd been here a while earlier it would have been fiddleheads galore these are fiddleheads here. There's actually one here that's a good size. Once they're six to eight inches, they're too big and not good to eat, toxic. But at this size, if I can find some of these, then I could put together a meal. It's not looking good. Ooh. Black flies, <coughs> mosquitoes, and thick bush. Ugh. So, unless I pick up a trail. Oh wow, that was wet. Ugh. It's like flicked me in the mouth and it was all wet for some reason. Uh, unless I pick up a trail, this ain't happening. But plan B is pretty good. Beautiful going along this creek though. Yeah, this would be a really sucky bushwhack. Hello? Well, good news 
is that I've made it to the first pond. Bad news, there's no chance that I'm taking the gear and canoe in here. Uh, it's way, way too much of a grind for a small pond. It's There are subsequent ponds and small lakes that I'm hoping to get to, but just this is, is too tough, so. That's all right, it was a lovely walk in the woods. I'm gonna walk back to the last lake and if I run into a trail, that's the only thing that would save this mission, but the thought of just enjoying the last lake and eating lake trout, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, this little pond is not worth coming to. Oh, would you look at that glass? That's crazy. Who and why? It's got to be snowmobilers, which would require a snowmobile trail. There is a canoe. There is a canoe right there. It's, it looks very old. Let me check that out. Maybe there is, oh, and now it could be a trail. You gotta be kidding me. Oh man, <laughs> this could mean a lot of work. Looks like a trail. I can't believe that. So that must link up with the portage to the next lake. I took the most direct route, but clearly there's another way. <laughs> this is one of those little stubby like sports pals or uh, I can't remember the name of them but yeah left the right side up that's a strange way to store a canoe I'll turn it over for them if there were paddles I don't think there are I would paddle across the lake and see what's up look for another trail but I still don't think this is worth it. If anything, I'll have to come back another time now knowing this trail exists because too much X factor beyond. Oh man, this canoe is in rough shape. <laughs> it's got some really ugly repairs on it. Yeah, it is a sports pal. I see the logo there. Wow. Hope, uh, hope you're loved, girl. No canoe deserves to die out here. It should die on a rapid somewhere being used. Okay, I saw it. That's enough. The trail looked a lot better at the landing there. It's actually quite rough, so. All the more reason to say no. Back to the lake. The trail was right here. I put in just just down the shore there. And this trail's existence was completely unbeknownst to me. It got me thinking about if you were in a survival situation, how like the fine line between finding your road out and not. Sometimes when you're going from A to B, in my experience, it can be better to walk perpendicular to that direction because it gives you the best chance of intersecting a trail that is going that way. Rather than just trying to, you know, take a bearing and go in that way, walk this way and give yourself a chance to intersect the trail. And it was so close to me, I had no idea. So now I need to get back to that campsite, which might be impossible in this wind. Just behind the last point, as soon as I turn this corner, it's gonna get really nasty. It's gonna be a tough paddle. I think I can make it slow and steady. It's just gonna be strenuous. It's like biking up a steep hill. Taking a breather and a little lee here. Getting there, probably halfway there.
some rollers under the canoe so I could slide it up on the wood instead of the rock. Woohoo! Made it! Okay. Coors Lights, Lakeport Lights, aluminum foil, foil trays. Good haul. Lots of souvenirs to take home. It's kind of like at Niagara Falls when you get a penny made into a little souvenir. When you see that, does it make you want to litter? Boggles the mind, doesn't it? The wind is still raging, so I won't be getting back in the canoe anytime soon. But hopefully some trout for lunch tomorrow. Water and food barrel in the shade there. Tons of sticks for cooking and a terrific hammock set up back here with a million dollar view. Courtesy of our friend Andrew at Sukram's Brewing. Got the tarp half pitch for now just enjoying the view this evening i'll have to put it up though because there's potential for some big storms rain and potentially thunderstorms but for now just soaking this up soupy side so I'll just add the cheese right into it thicken it up a little got a nice avocado here some hot sauce and a couple of burritos that have been or uh, tortillas that have been in the fridge for a month or two and thankfully tortillas have the perishability of a Twinkie so they're still going Okay, took absolutely no time. There's camp. So Sean, lots of head shakes. Yeah, another Laker. Perfect eating size, but it's too early, and I'm pretty confident in catching more of them. Hook 
in the corner of the mouth. That's the beauty of trolling. So often they will be hooked in the corner of the mouth because your lure is constantly in motion. So they just get it and it just kind of locks right into the corner. So yesterday, just trolling down the lake, no special effort to fish, just trolling. I got four Lakers and lost two. And then I had to stop fishing for the rest of the day because of the wind. And now starting today with another lake trout immediately. Beautiful morning, I skipped breakfast and just had some uh, vector bars and that kind of thing. Just to get going and paddle while it's nice because the wind's supposed to pick up today, blowing in a storm tonight. 30 seconds later. This is insane. If 30, maybe 15 or 20. Another very decent lake trout. using this Berkeley Flicker Minnow deep. It's the 9D for, like, for a size and it's like green and orange, silver. small could be a good keeper it's still pretty early I'm just doing like another laker there it goes just pulled up on this gravel beach at the end of the lake south end some moose tracks. That would just be an incredible scene here. A moose standing here, looking out at the lake. The size of this guy, so cute. I'm curious, as someone watching this video, would you have rather seen me slog into those small lakes where I potentially get no fish, just the hope of brook trout, or have an enjoyable trip on this very scenic lake, catching and soon eating lake trout. Just curious. Okay, this could be a breakfast fish. I don't think it's even 9 a.m. yet. Uh, might be a bit big. Feels like a bit of weight there. Just looking for a small one, like pound and a half, max two. This one feels probably more like three, three and a half. <clears throat> yeah. A little bigger than I need. One of the best fighters so far. Oop, just got off. It's okay. It was similar to the the bigger ones that I've caught so far, probably close to four pounds. Okay. Ah. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Smash this guy ASAP. Just paddle over to shore quickly and then club it on the head. Hit it several times just to make sure it's dead. Probably told this before, but I have done that to a fish before. And then I actually took it home, put it in the sink, ran water over it, and it came back to life. It wasn't dead, so that was just disturbing and I felt so bad. So just make sure they're dead. Found a good cut log, which would make a nice cutting board. 
before I clean a fish, I like to run my finger down the stomach and try to push any poo and pee out. Otherwise it tends to end up on the cutting board, which is kind of gross. Well, there's some poop. So I'm just gonna butterfly this trout. Cut it open on the stomach. I'll cut its head and tail off so it fits in the pan. And I'll just cook it whole like that with some seasoning inside. And the bugs are gonna enjoy chewing on me while I do this. I'm just angling the knife so it barely cuts into the skin. Otherwise I'll cut all its organs open and spill all that nasty stuff onto the flesh. Oh. See the swim bladder here? This inflates and deflates based on a fish's depth to give it buoyancy or let it fall, rise and fall. Puncture it like a balloon. Alright, deflated. Alright. I just took the head and pulled it back and then most of the innards come out with it. And just have to scrape all this stuff out. And I'll snip off the tail just because it's a bit too long for the pan, but without the tail, it'll fit nicely. Here's should help with the bugs a bit. this log over. Got a table now. Oh, it smells good. I just got a whip. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. I generally prefer fillets, but it's nice with a smaller trout. This one could have been filleted, but with this size or anything smaller, it's nice to cook it whole because you get all the meat. On a small fish, the fillets can be quite small, but now with uh, this style of cooking, I can pick all the meat off the spine, in the ribs, you know, you're cutting on the outside of the ribs, the rib cage, if you're filleting, and uh, with this you can get all the meat in and between, so nice to use it all. That's all that's left, plus the rib bones, already burned. Hmm. I don't really even bring soap anymore. I just sanitize by boiling. Perfect spot here to have lunch, a little gravel beach. Gravel is nice because you can get the canoe in easily, just ram it right in there basically. And unlike sand, it doesn't get kicked up into your food. So that is pretty much the perfect shore lunch spot right there. Right now I'm feeling pretty good about the decision to stay on this lake. I could be bushwhacking through thick bush and black flies, all for potentially no fish. So. It was the right call on this one. Otter? Or a mink? I can't tell yet. It's pretty far away. I'm zoomed in. It's curious about me. Get into the hammock for a bit. It's just too windy out. And a trick I like to use is to put my bag full of air and sealed up right under the foot box. And then the hammock can't come too far down, it hits that. Move it a little forward here. It just hits it, and then you don't slide forward. Wind is up. Perfect conditions for reading though.
the upside of the wind is no bugs. And I hope it's blowing in a big storm. That would be fun tonight. So the storm is supposed to blow in from the southeast, shifting to the southwest. So it's going to be coming right down here. I was originally going to hang between these trees, but felt too exposed. So I tucked back in here, still fairly exposed, but better. And I can really pitch the front end of the tarp down. So that'll keep driving rain from getting under it. I've got these well secured with extra weight, rocks, logs. let up for a minute here. Pretty good storm last night packed up under the tarp because it still looks pretty gray. Got some firewood there under the tarp. Make breakfast this morning with. Hopefully I can get out of here dry. be able to pick this up but somewhere over there something's clopping along it sounds like a moose walking on the edge of the water I don't see it though hear that there it is awesome Good thing it's a really calm, quiet morning. If the wind was up, I never would have heard that. Oh, is that it? <laughs> that was an awesome way to start the day. Just walked along the beach there, and then once the beach ran out, back into the woods. Now something you won't get in most of the survival training shows out there is the use of echolocation. Observe. Echo! I'm somewhere over there. Ricola! Almost packed up here, sticking down the tarp pretty much last in case it started raining. 
This little sapling would have been scratching on the hammock, so I just put a stick over it to bend it back. And there it goes, it's good as new. Same with this one, the tarp. This would have been scratching the tarp, especially in all that wind. So I just lightly bent it over and I know it will just bend back into shape instead of killing it, you know. Definitely one of the nicest places I've ever hung. And there's even like a rock wall in behind here. Just provides a sense of comfort, you know, walls around you. And then you're, it's just the water in front of you and cliffs. They're really nice. Here's where that moose is walking along. That was such a treat. Getting to see wildlife or a moose on the highway is cool. Seeing them as I'm traveling, great. But being lucky enough to have one visible from my campsite in the morning, that's just really special. He's still biting. Popped out. There you go. Thanks, buddy. Ah. Okay, there you go. This is just a lake trout paradise. Deep, cold, rocky lake. It's actually over 300 feet deep. Another one coming through the narrows. Same lure the whole time, all trolling. One more, why not? What a lake. You small guy. Okay, back to the access lake. Oh man. It's a scorcher today. It's only 10.30. It's already really hot and muggy and buggy. It's hard to believe that Aaron and I ended our brutal trip here when it's been such an ideal little trip for me. If you want to check out that experience with Aaron, I'll link that video here. And I have a feeling I'll be back for those potential brook trout lakes someday. Hopefully with Aaron. It'd be better with uh, a little reinforcement.